Hey coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip, episode number 10. Today we're going to talk about play action pass off the buck. And if we ever communicate, correspond with each other through email or through Twitter or Facebook, when I say PAP, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I say that not because I think you're ignorant, but I've actually had coaches say, what do you mean PAP? I said, play action pass. It's just the way I write it down and uh, my shorthand. I don't know if I stole it from somebody, which I'm sure I did because everything I got, um, I got from somebody else. Now, this is our uh, kind of a waggle out of the basic formation that we used earlier. Now, this, I like running it with that flex tied in, uh, or flex split in. By the way, I didn't mention this. I love to run jet to the field, okay? And I love to run buck to the boundary. I love to run it to the boundary, and you can legit cheat this guy in a little bit, get him below the numbers and close to the, closer to the hash, to the line, to the ball. And it also helps with him cracking if you want to do it that way, but also gets him to the middle of the field on that backside post when you run you know, a version of waggle, a play action pass off the buck look. First off, the way I like the block play action pass, it's down, 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 okay? He's pulling. We'll talk more about it. He's gap flipping. looks just like it does on the buck or just like it does on anything on the backside. Now, the rules of this guy here is you're going to block down, I tell him, three steps or until you make contact, and they're taught OTL on the line. Do not go downfield. On the third step, if they have not drawn a D lineman, in this case he won't, they're going to shuffle back, and as they shuffle, and you got to practice it, but if you do it a lot during the summer, you won't have to do it a lot during the season. They're going to shuffle back with their eyes inside to avoid the pulling guard and also find any leakage, back or run through. Somebody ripped across somebody's face over here. We gap flipped and the end went flat down the line. Something might be there. Guard's going to block down on the nose. Just stay with him and just work him up the field. Don't go down the field. Work him up the field See, because the quarterback's leaving. Now, I always show the linemen what's going on behind them. So you get an idea, some kind of spatial idea of what's going on. The center's going to block back all the way to the three and run his butt up the field. Okay, The guard's going to pull. And I didn't put him blocking right here. I just got him going here. And he's going to read that in just like a lot of guys do on the waggle. If that end squeezes with this down block, we'll log him. Quarterback's got to see that, and he'll keep coming outside. If he runs up the field like 80% of them do in our, in our league, then you're going to kick him. Quarterback's going to curl up right here behind where the tackle was, and then he's going to look at what he's got. Now, most of y'all really want to see the formation. I mean, most of y'all want to see the, the routes. Over here, we're going to do a little bit different. Instead of a guy in the flat, we're going to take the X and run him what we call an idle route and tell him to run to the tick marks, the top of the tick marks on the sideline. You know, the yard lines. Don't go any further than that. That way when you catch it, if you do like, if your foot drops, you won't go out of bounds. So right there. And you sit there three to five yards. No deeper than five. I think that's what the fighter pilots call the, there's a hard ceiling or whatever. You can't go above it or can't go below it. That's, you don't want to go more than three. About three, no more shallow. And no deeper than five. Kind of like you taught the fullback in the old wing T days, remember? The flatback days. Three to five, because he's your flat route. Remember we did on the on the buck, we did the slant RPO on the backside. I know he's not running a real slant. You're not taking the steps and cutting. Dude, it's a high school kid playing outside linebacker. He's going to see, if he's right here on his head, he sees that guy release in here. He said, man, they've been beating me. He's going to try to get to that. Okay, and you tell that kid about three or four steps inside, that's enough to make that dog react, get vertical, boom, and run a good old corner route no deeper than 22 yards. Look at the space it's created. Almost 20 yards between the two. Even a good little corner has been taught to kind of play in between is going to have tough uh, sledding on that. God, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. Okay, money back guarantee. That son of a buck right there is going to be open 95% of the time. He's going to be as buck naked wide open as the day he was born because ain't nobody taught to run to those tick marks and cover. As you get the occasional team that runs man, that corner's right here. Yeah, he'll be with him. But now that dog's got to be a heck of a player to cover that corner man to man. 
But against a zone defense, that there's going to be open. you got a guy that can run a little bit. He's going to catch it at three at the shallowest. He's going to fall down for five. If he gets tackled immediately, he just falls forward. That's a good football play. Okay? That's a good little combination right there. We call that an idle, and that's like a slant corner. Okay? And I don't, we run crazy routes that just suit us and what we want to do. And we can do that when you got wristbands. You can tell the kid, you know, slant three, corner. So he knows slant three, go to his spot that he usually breaks, and then break to your corner. On the back side, it's just like old school waggle. You got the drag, and we run our drag a little shallower than a lot of folks do, but we tell him don't go any deeper than eight, no more shallow than four, can kind of work from four to eight coming across. And I teach him the H to run right through that end where he was, like you're doing a down block. And this, and hopefully, maybe the corner will think Buck's coming to him and come up or something like that, or a safety will see it and come up, and we might get this post uh, open behind it. So that's a pretty good little combination right there. All right, some folks like to run – we talked about bunch earlier in the episode 9. Let's look at a bunch – Waggle right here, a bunch play action pass, uh, and I call this solid because he's not going to roll out on this, and you can block it every how you want to, every how you block play action pass. He's going to come right here and fake just like he does, and the quarterback, instead of rolling, he's going to set up, boom, right here. Some people call it solid, some people call it base because he's not rolling or anything like that, and you can do all kind of things out here with this guy. You can slant him, you can post him, but you're primarily your right over here is where you're going. Okay, and you got all kind of different combinations you can do. You got bunch routes for days. Okay. Now I really like doing something like this, like blocking him down, threatening that end, and getting here, blocking him down, and going straight to the corner right now, block him down, come right there to the flat. Okay, that's tough. That's a form of a flood route. Okay, or you can do like block him down, come here, and him go to the corner. Block him down right here, and him run a deep out or a deeper out, and him just run a quick little shallow flat like the fullback does on a uh, on an old school waggle. So there's all kind of cool ways, and you get anything you want to do. But if you're running buck from bunch, you need to be running some play action pass off of it as well. Now, I love tailback screens, especially off that waggle look we gave a while ago. And we've got several that we've run, and I got a couple on film that we've done, done going way back. Even when we were under center, we did it this way, where you will take – you can't block it that way. But you're going to come – he's going to come right here like he always does and then curl back right here. Quarterback's going to fake, come here on a roll. And you've got to be an athlete, and then he's going to throw back over here, and you block the screen the way you want to. Now, I love running guys off on this. Y, H. Take him here, take him here, and block the screen the way you want to. High hat here, run him. Boom, right there, hi-hat here, boom, throw him, run the alley, and that, that's nasty right there. And, I, it, and everybody knows how to block a screen. We're not going to go into great detail. Everybody pretty much blocks it one or two or three ways. But that's a great look right there is running tailback screen. And then you got tailback throwback, and usually we do it the other way. But imagine we're running buck, or running buck, running buck, running buck, and we have waggled their fannies to death or play action them to death. All right, so you block it just like you always have been blocking right here. Boom. He comes, and, and I tell the tailback, half butt fake. We want everybody to know. We want your granny sitting in the stands to know you ain't got the football. So you're going to come right here and do a little half butt fake, okay? Kind of stand around a little bit for a snap a little bit. Just kind of right here. Boom. And you're going to gun it like a wheel route right there. 
Again, we love running that uh, running buck to the sideline. So you got, I tell them to run right down the bottom of those cockeyed numbers right there. And we got the post coming here, the drag coming here. So we're clearing out. And unless that corner is really, really disciplined, that joker's going to be open. And you run your, and just call it. If this is how you do your waggle or whatever you want to call it, boom, just call the play and you have a tag. Now, what I had was a signal. When I was still on the sideline, we used to do this a lot. And then when we did it, when I went to the press box, the guy signaling him a place had a signal that we just give the tailback and quarterback. Everybody else is just running regular waggle or whatever it is you want to call it. And he'd roll right here and then throw that joker back right here. And that's pretty nasty right there. So that's a good way of doing it too. Real quick, one more that has been real effective for us, especially on goal line, two-point conversion. And everybody knows it, but maybe you haven't thought about doing it this way. Okay? Is run your waggle on two-point conversion inside the 10. Any place where you're going to get really match coverage or man coverage, something like that, and these guys are going to react to it. Slant bubble but now here's the thing about the bubble you're not throwing the bubble now and i can show you what we do what happens is that dog remember that's what i call an outside linebacker that dog he's not going to be apex because we're near the goal line he's going to be out here okay and if they're a man he better be a heck of an athlete so we're going to fake do everything like we do it and come in here and I even tell the quarterback, I said, dude, you got to roll. If that guy comes, I tell that, you know, those guards, they're going to have to hit him hard, and you're going to roll. And what you get is that dog sees bubble. He runs to it. That Z right there, just a lob over his head, touchdown, or two, point, or two points. I'm telling you, i got the film to prove it. That cat is good. Here's my point, guys. It's not that coaching is not good. It's that coaching is so good and time is limited. You know, because small schools especially, kids go both ways. But even at bigger schools where they're getting an hour and a half or two hours of just offense or just defense, time is still limited. They're repping things a certain way. And when I watch film, I don't just watch film so I don't see how good the players are. You know, you look for the kid you can trap. You look for the kid that you can, you can screen on. You look for the DN you can read. But you also try to figure out the why. Why do they play it that way? What is their coaching? And way back in one of the episodes, I said, as a play caller, your goal should be to cast doubt in the defensive players' minds on what they've been coached to do and in some degree been coached to do it since Jump Street. Okay? Or just na human nature, human reaction. They're going to run to that bubble. They're going to make that tackle. And that Z is just going to keep right on going. Just going to go, just wheel it right on in here. And, of course, it's going to be amazed. He put a move on right here. He'll be wide open if that guy, if this guy plays it perfect and realizes what's going on and heads him off at the pass, then you're one-on-one -on -one with the corner right here. Better have you a, a dude out there. But remember, your job as a play caller is to cast doubt into those defensive kids' heads. And some of my best friends, even on our staff, are defensive-minded guys, and you know they kind of dog me out about it sometimes, playfully. So, man, y'all are so bad. And I said, yeah. I said, I know what you're teaching. I pay attention to what they say. They're really sharp dudes, and and I listen to what they say, and I and I walk around and and watch them practice our kids on defense and hear what they're saying. I talk to other coaches. I said, what that you know that's one of the reasons. All right, real quick before we go, get off the subject of a pass. And go back to Buck. And I meant to tell you all this. I've had somebody asking me, all right, we're talking about Buck Sweep now, why I don't do this. But Auburn does it. Those big schools up around Atlanta and Birmingham do it when they run it. Yeah, you, you know what? They're playing against a DN that all he plays is DN. And every time you get a down block from that tackle, not every time, but most of the time, his butt's going to squeeze. And you can do this right here and get your block and still have a buck sweep. Okay? But when you get into smaller schools where you got limited practice time and you got two hours a day and only 
an hour at most of that is on defense or an hour at most of that is on offense. And y'all know what I'm talking about because most coaches are there. Okay? That DN, as I told y'all in the previous video, high, most high school defensive linemen are like water. They're going to take the path of least resistance. He's going to run his happy butt right up the field, and you don't have a buck anymore. Somebody said, well, you just run it right here, coach. Yeah, but you know why I run buck? Because I want to run, I want to run it right there. That's why I run buck. I don't run buck so you can dictate to me run B gap. I want to run C or D gap. That's why you call buck. Now, you know, slap me and call me crazy. But I think if you read the book, that's where buck's supposed to go. And I know, now if I was playing against cats like that, you know, if I was coaching at a school like that, sure I would do it. Because most of the time we're going to get a squeeze. I'm going to get that H right there on that squeezing DN. And I still got me a football player. I got my alley out here the way Tubby Raymond and Vince Lombardi meant that joker to be. Okay, not running a power with two pulling guards. And also think about the time, coaches, O-line coaches, listen to me, that you've got to teach those guards to read that, to react to that. Oh, I got to get right. He ran up the field. I got to get right here. And it's just like a, a little wrap or loop or X block. It's a, but doing it my way, putting the H out here, you put the cones down, you do the buck drill, it's the same every cockeyed time. That's why I do it that way. Practice time for me. The defense doesn't have enough time to make that in, play that joker the way the colleges do it and some of the bigger high schools may do it. And we don't have time as an offensive staff at a smaller school to teach those guys to react to the different ends doing different things. And I'm telling you, every year, it's third or fourth round, and sometimes it's not even then, that we get in small school football in Alabama to teams that are going to squeeze consistently like that. Because a lot of them, all your really good teams, they just running up the field or just controlling gaps and playing with athletes. Okay? So understand that. And that's kind of off the subject of play action pass, but I missed talking about that before. Why I don't do that, because somebody had, uh, had asked me that. All right, guys. Remember what I always tell you. Gals, too. I know I got some gals out there subscribing. I saw your name. You know, unless you're a dude named Sharon. How you doing, Sharon Griffin? And episode 10, play action pass off the buck. You can contact me at siegel.chip at gmail.com. I'm Chip Siegel on Twitter. I'm Chip Siegel on Facebook. Y'all keep on jetting. Keep on bucking, and as always, be elite. Thank y'all.